Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to take the last CRUD example, which had permissions enabled for forms to search and edit and write in, uh, in the data tables. Um, and we're going to move that over so that all of the database queries are properly contained on the server instead of um, providing access for the front end to read and write the database. If you have access on the front end, then someone with nefarious um, goals could actually write to your database by adjusting the code in their browser. So we want all of that database code to be stored on the server and executed on the server. So the first thing we're going to do um, is take this data table permission. I've got a, another version of this app here, and we're going to switch it over so that there is no access. Now, if we do that in the original app, that's going to disable the ability for all of these features that we enabled for the client code, the front end code, to be able to um, interact with the database. So um, first thing we need to do is in the code, uh, when the um, form first loads in the init, um, we set the repeating panel items uh, to the results of a, a search. Um, so we need to take this code that's now running in the front end and move that over to some server code. So after you change the access, turn that off, disable it for the front end, we're going to add a server module. Um, and we're going to put that first little bit in a function, which I just called get all rows. And um, this is the exact same code that was run on the front end that we used to um, set the repeating panel one items to uh, the results of this search. We're now going to copy and move that code into this function. Make sure it's Anvil server callable. Decorate it with the little at sign and make it Anvil server callable. Um, and then on the front end, we can call that function get all rows. Um, and the value that's the values that are returned from that search, we're now going to set repeating panel one to um, to the results of this code that's now running on the server. So instead of running it here, we're just running it on the server, calling that function, and setting the results of that to um, the items property of repeating panel one. Okay, the next little bit of database interaction we had um, was when we clicked on the new button, we added a row to the database table. So what we're going to do is, again, take all that that little one line of code, move it into a server module into a function which we'll call add row. So if we go over here, we take the code that was in this line on the client form, app tables.peeps.add row, and move that into a function called add row and run the client. We don't have to return a value from that like we did in this first function because we're not getting a value back from that function. All we're doing is adding a row to the data table, to the peeps data table. So we've called that function add row. And on form one, we can now execute that function, call that function with Anvil server call add row, and then do what we did before. Um, open the form to refresh the page. We have some more of these sorts of calls on the uh, in, in the template. Um, this is the template for repeating panel one. Um, for example, when the um, delete icon was clicked, uh, is clicked in this um, design, we run this code, which confirms that the user wants to um, delete that current row. And in the original, example, since the front end had access to the database, all we need to, needed to do was do a self item dot delete. So what that does, but calling that delete method on self dot item, self dot item, when we first ran the, uh, you know, the application, we opened up form one, that init function 
set each of the rows of the um, repeating panel to one row of the database. The, the items of that um, row in the, in the repeating panel <clears throat> was set to one row of database. We did that when we first opened the app. That was the very first thing we did. We set the items property of the repeating panel to basically the full uh, results of the, of the database with one row of the database um, being assigned to one row of this repeating panel. So self.item refers to a row of the database. So if we call delete, <coughs> excuse me, on that row, um, self.item delete removes that row from the database. And then calling self, um, calling remove from parent method on self just removes that um, displayed row from the uh, repeating panel. So that's how we did it initially after we got a user to confirm whether or not they wanted to delete it. So what we need to do is take that database call, the delete method that we called on um, self.item, and we're going to send that row of the database, um, self.item, to a function which we call delete row on the server, del row on the server. Now you can see we have this delete function. And we're sending it one argument, which here we've called ITM item, um, to refer to the row of the database that was passed as an argument to this function. And then again, on that row, which was passed to this function, we're calling the delete method, which will delete that row from the database. So now that all happens in the server, we don't have to worry that someone can do that on the front end. Okay, so we've changed that little delete method from running on the front end to in our, in our new version running on the server. And notice all of these functions are decorated with the anvil.server anvil callable decoration so that uh, they can be called from the front end. Okay, so this runs, just so you see it, this runs, if we go back to the design, um, you can see this runs when we click on this little um, icon over here. Um, it's kind of out of view here. If I open this up a little wider, you can see that there is a trash can icon and that, if I double click on it, you can see that is the function which gets run. So on every row, there's a little trash can icon and it runs that just on the row of the database, which is referred to by self.item on, on that particular row. Okay, so now um, one of the biggest things that made this um, simple CRUD app work so easily was, this is the original app here. Um, when we set the bindings, there was a really convenient little option to write back. So this text box was set to the name column in that row of the database self.item.name, this was set to the address column, the field of that row, which holds the address, this was set to the kids um, column, and this was set to the notes column, and this was set to the birthday column of that row in the database for each row in the repeating panel. And because right back was checked, this uh, repeating panel had the ability to write back any edits you made in the user interface, in this GUI, um, any edits that the user made could be written back to the database and saved to the database. In order to, um, to enable that, you have to have the database tables um, searchable, editable, and writable by the front end. Now, since we're disabling that possibility, because again, we don't want to get any nefarious users access to the database um, because they could just change their code and actually be able to write back to the database if we've given front end access to that. They can take the code in their browser, change it, edit the code in their browser to do something we don't want them to do. If we put these functions into the server, they can't um, change those, the, the, the 
the operations in those server functions so we can be sure the server functions are operating the way we want and that they haven't edited any of that, that code. So we have to disable all these write backs and provide another um, way to interact with the database um, because we've disabled writing in the data tables. So if I go back to the design of this um, repeating panel template, <coughs> excuse me, you can see that um, when we look at the, um, the bindings of unchecked all of these write back bindings, they'll just give us an error once we disable write access on the database table. So what we need to do instead, um, I added another little icon to each row. So instead of just having a trash icon, now I've added a little um, save icon. And what we'll do here, because we no longer have write back access, we'll write a bit of code that will write um, that uh, the changes back to the uh, database. So this is not in the original, uh, the original code of our simple CRUD app. The, the write back function functionality did all this for us automatically. So for that button, this is called button two on that form. What we're going to do is we're going to call a function which we'll call edit row that exists now on the on the server we need to create that function in the server um, <clears throat> and uh, we're going to send it again the row of the database which is um, bound to this row of the each row of the um, of the repeating panel and we're also going to send it the text that's been entered into text box one, the text that's been entered into area one, the text that's been entered into text box two, area two, and also the date that's been chosen by the date picker. So if we look at design, those are all of the um, widgets that are in the design of the repeating panel, text box one, text area one, this is text box two. It can only contain a number of values, so we're not seeing its, uh, it's um, it's name there, but um, that's been set to only uh, hold number values and text is set to text value. And then this is again, the date value. So when we click on this um, uh, save icon, it's going to call again, a server function and we server call anvil server call the edit row function and the arguments that are sent to that function are the row of the def database is a reference to the row of the database, um, self.item, and then all of the things that have been typed in or changed by the user in the user interface. So when we go over to the server module, you can see edit row is now Anvers an Anvil server callable uh, function. Here's the edit row function. It's taking all of those items which we've sent, all those pieces of data values that we've sent, which include, we're calling the the uh, self.item, the row of the database, I again referred to that as ITM here, is the variable ITM item. Uh, and then name, address, kids, notes, and birthday, those were the five fields, the text fields, um, the, um, the uh, date selector, and the text areas. Those are the arguments that we're sending to this function. And then we just call on the uh, reference to the, the database row, which we refer to as ITM, we call the update method, and that updates each of the columns in that row, which we've uh, which we've sent from the um, from the repeating panel. When we clicked on the uh, save button, and we're updating the name, address, kids, notes. And birthday columns to the name, address, kids, notes, and birthday values, which have been passed to the function. So that updates the row of the database. That takes the place of this write back option that we could enable because we can no longer write back directly from the front end. Okay, so let's see what else we've got here. Um, on the form one, ah, yeah, we had a, a search and sort functionality. So when we clicked on um, the uh, search box, when we entered some search or filter text in there, uh, or when we dropped down any of the 
um, columns that we wanted to sort by. And when we selected uh, true or false for ascending for that first column, um, it would run this sort db method. Okay, and so what was happening with this sort db method was we were taking, this is in the original form, we were taking the, um, the items property um, that's assigned to the repeating panel one, um, the, the results of this search in the database. And what that search would do is it would order the tables by uh, the order, the, uh, the column selected in um, drop down one, and then it would um, organize them, sort them in ascending order or descending order based on whether uh, the value in drop down two was true or false. So we can order the, um, the tables first by this, this column selected up or down, and then next by the column selected in uh, the second drop down, and then third by the column selected in the third drop down. And then also um, the search would only return results that match this I like query. So if the name column of the database um, contains the text uh, that was typed into uh, text box one, and these are wildcards. So anything before that text or anything after that text um, uh, would be um, would be accepted um, in this search. So this wildcard, if you typed in, for example, in text box one, the characters A, B, this could be any set of characters before A, B, and any set of characters after A, B, including nothing. So if you typed in A, B, and if A, B was found anywhere in the name, that would come up. So this little I like search is a nice way just to look for whether or not those characters exist at all in the in the name column. So It'll filter out basically any um, any results that don't have the text that's been uh, entered in text box one, and then it'll put it in this order. So if we selected, uh, for example, the name column uh, in drop down one, it would order these all first by name, and if we have a whole bunch of uh, results that all have the same name, then it will sort it uh, those results by, for example, if we select drop down two uh, as address, it'll select those, uh, or it'll sort those um, items where all the names match next by address and then third. So if we have a bunch of names and addresses that match, it'll select it or search it, or I'm sorry, sort it um, next by the, the last column that's selected. So uh, we can select any of those columns as our first, second, and third um, options and also filter out um, any results that don't contain the text here. Now, in this original app, we had um, this function running on the front end because we gave access to the database from the front end. In order to delete or remove that um, capability so that no one can get access to our database on the front end, we need to take this entire uh, actually with this entire search. And we're gonna set uh, the items property of the repeating panel to um, the results of a function. We're gonna move this all to a function on the server and <clears throat> we will uh, uh, then just take those results that come from the function call and uh, send them back, return them back. So if we look at this, um, what we're doing is, again, we're setting the items of the repeating panel to the results of an Anvil server call, a function on the server. The name of that function is going to be called search. And what we're going to pass as arguments to the search function will be all those values that were originally used in the search function on, on the original, uh, on the original um, front end search. So we use the drop down one value, the drop down two value, drop down three, um, uh, the sort sort two, the sort three, and also text box one. So in our um, 
in our um, search function, we, we're going to need those values. So we're going to pass to the search function the sort one selected value, the drop down two selected value, all those same values that were executed originally on the front end. Now these values are all going to be sent to this um, search function. The search function again is decorated with Anvil server callable. And the search function takes these uh, five arguments, which here we're going to call sort one, TF for true false, sort two, sort three, and search text. That's the, the, the variable names we're giving to those arguments, which have been passed to the function. And this is the same function now that's been, uh, that we used here on the front end. This is the exact same code, only we're replacing the, the values uh, on the front end widgets with the values which have been passed to the function. So we're taking that, the result of the sort, sort one dropdown is now just called sort one. The result of the true false dropdown is now just called TF. Sort two, sort three, drop downs and also the text that was typed in by the user into the uh, text box is now called search text. So the front end pass those values to the search function. The search function runs the um, search on the database and returns that, uh, returns that value back where it was called on form one. And that gets assigned to the items property of the repeating panel. So we're just taking that code, moving it to the server, calling it, sending it the values it needs to run the function on the server, and then returning all that back and um, setting the items, um, the items property of the repeating panel of that so that the repeating panel then displays the results of the search. And uh, that's it. What we've done now is moved every bit of the functionality, which was in the original, um, in the original app that had access to the database, put them all in server by calling functions, sending the arguments, the, the variables we need to those functions so that they run securely on the server where no nefarious user can um, change their, uh, their intended operation. So everything basically where we're doing anything that includes a database operation. So there's a database operation. Um, any of these um, bits of code where on the front end, we're performing a database operation. Those were all the things that got moved to the server. So any of these apps dot, uh, app tables dot peeps database data table dot search or any other sort of operation got moved. And that includes on the, um, on the template for the repeating panel, the write back operations that are automatically performed, very conveniently um, performed by the write, write back operation um, in the data binding, because these data bindings no longer have access to the database from the front end, we had to write that, that bit of code which um, which perform that for us on the server. And so now we're going to see the exact same operation if I run run this. Now, of course, I have two different apps here with two different databases. Um, I don't believe I shared the databases here. You can, though, if you want, um, provide uh, one app access to a data, data table in another app. And you can, if if it's convenient for you, if you're creating an admin interface, it is possible to create in a second app, read and write access to a data table. Um, even if in the original app, the read and write access is not provided to the front end. So if you want to make an admin using front end access in a separate app, it's possible to do that. Okay, so here we can, this was the original app, we can create a, um, I'm going to create a new entry and we'll just save that. That's already been saved because of the write back. We can delete an entry. Um, we can search. So that gets rid of all of the 
entries that don't have the letters ASDF. And if I put ASDF, I think we're going to get you know, just one entry. And again, if we want to order by a different field, I can select that. Now you can see the results have all been ordered by the address field. So it's going alphabetically, alphanumerically according to that. And if we wanted to, um, for example, sort by name and then address, what we'd get here would be, uh, you can see uh, we have a whole bunch of entries, rows of the database that um, have the same name. And here there's kind of in a random order. If we sort next by address, we'll get those same um, name results, but with all those name results being sorted, um, all those same name results being sorted by address next. Now we could do the same thing if we wanted to sort that next by number of kids, for example, that would sort those results by the number of number of kids. Okay, so, and uh, of course we can delete um, by clicking on trash icon. Um, so the, the other application has the exact same um, functionality, but with all of the database functionality moved to the server so that it's a properly secured application. Let's run this. We should get the exact same functionality. Remember, the only thing we had to do to um, add um, this functionality to the um, uh, to the front end was add a little save icon um, because we no longer have right back. So let's add a new item here. And I get, I'm on a very slow netbook doing this, but Anvil is nice and fast. So let's just add a little bit of data here. When I save this, let's uh, choose date. And I added a little alert here saying it's been saved. And so now it refreshes and you can see that the, um, the items have been resorted according to the first column. And if I want to delete something, let's just add a little uh, new column here, or I'm sorry, new row, click on delete. And that now runs the server function, which deletes that row. And of course we can run the searches. Uh, let's do the same thing. We'll just filter out anything that doesn't have ASDF. And we can also do the sorts the same way again. These are all calling now server functions instead of just relying on the, the front end uh, access to the database. So we get the exact same functionality, exact same app layout, exact same repeating panel layout. All the widgets are run exactly the same way, really all the same code. The only thing that's different, um, that's just really entirely different is that we had to create um, um, some replacement functionality for that write back capability. And again, we did that by um, removing the, the write back capability from, uh, from this repeating panel layout so that none of these, none of these little uh, um, fields have write back capability anymore like they did in this original app. And we wrote a function which passed the, um, the text entered into each of those widgets to the edit row function on the server. So that was the hardest part of this. We're still talking about a few dozen lines of code for this entire application. And uh, you know where our little quick crud run through was maybe five minutes. Now we're talking maybe 10 minutes to build a proper CRUD application with server access on the database. I'm gonna say it one more time just to make sure this is clear. If I were to, um, instead of having created a new table, if I had loaded a table from this original app, um, you know, instead of creating a new table, we could take the, the data from this original, um, this original app, which we called, I think we called peeps, people. Um, we could take that data table and if we wanna provide admin access, we can create a separate app, load a data table in, and in that separate app, provide access 
um, to the front end. And in that admin app, we can provide um, permission for the forms to, to search, edit, and delete. And so in that way, we can do the quick CRUD um, uh, ability because we can password protect or somehow you know, add user access to um, the admin app. And in that app, without providing access in this app, we can provide access in the admin app um, to the same database table. So if you do want to do the quick CRUD thing, um, this is you know, a great way to provide access for um, admins to edit database contents um, without having to move all your functionality to the, to the um, server. So that, that's easily done with Anvil and um, you know, it's a, a nice option for providing admin access that, that only certain users will have if, if you want to give them access to the database. Okay, so uh, a very detailed run through here. I've got another video where I actually go through, it's about 29 minutes long, where you can go through and watch me build this app. Um, I'll link that also. So if you wanna, if you wanna see the actual process of me taking the, the quick credit app with front end access and building it into the, um, the app with only server access, uh, you can watch that process, you know, character by character as I build the app. And um, if you run it at uh, at double speed, it's very listenable. It takes about 15 minutes to go through. So hopefully that's helpful.